Welcome to Strategic Job Search, a workshop presented by WorkSource Spokane. Today we will cover developing a personal presentation about your skills and experience, employer recruitment methods, organizing your job search, networking to meet the people you need to know where you want to work, and culminating in social networking. In many ways, job searching is a full-time job requiring full commitment of your time, efforts, and energy. It is very similar to a sales job. Your task is to sell your skills, experience, personality, and character to an employer so that you stand out from the competition for your next job. Like any sales endeavor, there are two steps in the process. First, advertising is needed to get the message out and to hook the employer's interest. Your advertising is done through your resume, cover letter, and job applications. The second step is to develop a pitch to close the deal. That is your personal presentation or pitch. It is necessary that you learn to describe yourself in a personal pitch to help an employer connect the dots between you and the skills they need. Your personal presentation, sometimes called an elevator speech or a 60 second commercial, is a brief 30 to 60 second introduction of yourself as related to your profession, including your name, your profession, your relevant work experience, including where and how long you have worked for employers, whatever education or training helped prepare you for your career, what makes you stand out above the competition in terms of high level or unusual skills, talents, and character qualities, and finally, a description of the type of job opportunity you are currently seeking. An example of a personal pitch would be, hello, my name is Jane Jobseeker. I am a paralegal specialist with over 10 years experience at Franken Mitchell in corporate law and contracts. I have an associate's degree from Savannah University in legal administration and 90 hours of continuing education credit in legal processes. Those I have worked with have told me that I am exceptional at data integrity, mediation, negotiation, and working independently. I am seeking a new opportunity to work as a paralegal in tax law. I would appreciate you keeping me in mind in case you hear of a job that you think would be a good fit for me. Now take a moment to write an outline of your professional profile. Pause the video while you work on this, then resume when you are finished. You will use your personal pitch to connect to people in your field who might help you find job leads or recommend you to their employer. We call this networking. Your pitch will be your introduction to employers at job fairs or other hiring events and it will be the perfect opening line in a job interview to introduce yourself and show your values. A good pitch will help you show the employer that you are a good fit for their need. Your pitch is a great tool to present yourself to an employer when visiting them in a cold call to inquire about open positions. Instead of just asking, are you hiring? Why not share your personal pitch to introduce yourself and then let them know that you would love to work there. When meeting prospective employers or even in networking, a business card is a great tool to help transform a job search contact into an ongoing networking relationship. You may think that business cards are only for people who have jobs, but remember, you do have a job. Your job is marketing yourself as a great candidate, and every salesperson needs a business card, so people have their contact information to follow up. You can pick up perforated business card stock at your local office supply store and have business cards printed through your home printer. If that sounds like too much hassle, you can also order business cards through an office supply store or an online service such as Vistaprint. An order of 500 business cards typically costs between $15 and $20, and they are generally delivered within a few days of ordering. A typical business card, such as the one shown here, has your name and occupation in larger type. Use a job title that describes the position you are seeking. Contact information follows in smaller font. In your case, a full address is not necessary, though it may be helpful to list your city and state. Be sure to include your phone number and email, and if you have one, your LinkedIn URL. We will discuss LinkedIn later in this presentation. Ideally, your card should have a picture, logo, or icon that represents your field of work. It is advisable to also use the back side of your business card to list your most relevant skills, qualities, and experience. The card, in effect, becomes your mini resume. You will never really go anywhere in your job search until you identify a target job. Beginning this process is easier than you might think. On a piece of paper, draw two rings, one for things you enjoy doing, and a second for things you are good at doing. You can list just about anything in these categories, including job titles, software applications, hobbies, and the like. Make sure to list things that you are both good at and enjoy doing in the space where the two circles overlap. Lastly, draw a third circle. In this circle, 
list things that an employer may pay you to do for them. The space where the three circles intersect is where you will write what you are good at, enjoy doing, and could get paid to do. This is the description of your target job. Pause the presentation and take a moment to think about your career desires and fill out the three circles we drew on the previous slide. When you are ready, resume the presentation. In order to keep your job search from being too broad, it is advisable to limit your job search to one to three job titles and 20 to 30 employers. Target these employers and research them to determine what positions they offer, opportunities of advancement, and when and how often they hire. Study their mission, vision, and culture. This will equip you to develop a targeted resume and cover letter for the specific employer. Pause the presentation to think about what employers you are aware of that might be interested in your skills. Write a few of them down. When you have done so, resume the presentation. You are probably familiar with the expression, getting a job is not about what you know, but who you know. Let's take a moment to explore why there is some truth to this statement. This inverted pyramid illustrates the opposite preferences employers and job seekers have in connecting. Most job seekers focus on the bottom two actions of the pyramid, either going in person or calling to ask if an employer is hiring and applying for a job advertised online, but these are the last choices of employers. The U.S. Department of Labor has discovered that at least 80% of the time when someone is placed in a new job, the position was never advertised anywhere, not on Indeed, not on ZipRecruiter, not even on the employer's own website. We call this the hidden job market. Not only do these jobs represent the bulk of job openings, they also tend to be the highest paying and most desirable positions. Let's look at an example of how this might happen. Let's say Bob started a company in his garage 10 years ago and managed to grow into a successful business. Susie is Bob's vice president of operations and has been Bob's right-hand person for the last several years. However, Susie just gave her six weeks notice. Put yourself in Bob's shoes. Would you rather go through the process of interviewing strangers or would you prefer to promote from within, choosing someone who already knows the ropes? Let's say Bob decides to promote Jennifer to the vice president position. Now Jennifer's spot is open, so Bob will promote another person to take her place. This game of reverse musical chairs typically continues until the boss is left with an empty position and no one to fill it. If Bob does not have anyone to promote to the empty position, he would probably ask his employees about any people they know who are looking for work. If that effort fails, Bob would likely return to recruiters and staffing agencies to fill the opening, or he may reach out to previous interns or volunteers. Walk-ins or online applicants would be his last resort. To access these hidden job market positions, you will want to reach out to establish relationships with the people who work there. Make connections and develop these connections into networking relationships. Your job search effectiveness is your job search competency, meaning your skills at resume writing, targeting employers and interviewing, multiplied by your connection effectiveness. But how easy is it to connect with people you don't know? How many networking connections would you need to build to reach the right people? It's easier than you might think. Let's take a look at a fascinating sociological theory, the six degrees of separation. This theory states that between you and any other person on the entire planet, there's a maximum of six degrees of separation, a maximum of five intermediary connections between you and anyone in the world. It means that you know someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows Brad Pitt. That seemed pretty outrageous to me when I first heard it. After all, there are over 7 billion people on Earth. How could I be so closely connected to everyone? A scientific study was conducted in the United States in which over 10,000 people in North America were surveyed. The study asked participants to provide the names of everyone they knew family, friends, current and former co-workers, neighbors, service providers, like beauticians, physicians, dentists, serving staff, and anyone else they could remember. This data was entered into a computer. The results showed that between any of the participants and any of the others, there was a maximum of four degrees of separation. Still, one might be skeptical. What would be more powerful than a scientific study in making you a believer? Personal experience. In one of my high school classes, we were talking about some new movie Brad Pitt had been in when my teacher mentioned that his sister babysat Brad Pitt when she was a teenager. None of us could believe that our French teacher in North Idaho had a sister who knew Brad Pitt. In this example, there were only three degrees of separation between me and Brad Pitt. But how do you use this connectedness to make contacts with prospective employers? Use the people you know to meet people where you want to work. Although it is possible to just ask people you know who they know, you can also utilize social media to gain more connections.
First, we're going to cover a couple of ground rules regarding social media in general. The first of which is to always put your best foot forward on any social media platform. Allow me to explain what this means. Generally speaking, most of us use social media sites like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for purely personal things, like keeping in touch with family or posting pictures to share with friends. It is always important to update your privacy settings to make sure only your friends can view your content. But even with privacy settings, remember that anything you share online can be found again, even if you delete it from your page. Do try your hardest to put your best foot forward by only posting content that is positive and appropriate for work. This is not to say you shouldn't share your passions or hobbies. Just try to avoid purposefully inciting any drama or getting into an argument in the comments section. You never know what a friend could screenshot and email to your employer. In short, don't post anything you would be uncomfortable with your potential employer and coworkers viewing. You can use social media like Facebook to expand your network by messaging your friends about introducing you to a contact of theirs or letting your friends know that you are looking for work. But generally speaking, it is not a great idea to rely on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for making job connections. By far the best social media resource to use is LinkedIn. LinkedIn focuses on professional connections and sharing skills. Your LinkedIn profile is essentially a CV or a very detailed resume. LinkedIn encourages its members to list all skills, job experience, and schools attended to broaden your ability to make connections. On LinkedIn, you can connect with people and encourage them to endorse your skills and post recommendations for you. Just about all employers have LinkedIn pages, so you can do a lot of research through the LinkedIn website or app. Be sure that you follow companies you are interested in working for. That way you can be notified whenever they publish a new post or update their information. Members of your desired company keep track of who follows them and engages with the content they post. Your interaction with their posts might tip the scales in your favor if you get an interview. On your personal page, you can share articles or videos that you want to show your connections. You can also write articles about your field and post them on LinkedIn. These articles are typically about five to eight paragraphs long and contain knowledge, tips, and ideas you have to offer regarding your field. The articles you write will always remain on your profile, so employers can read them and get a much better idea about what you have to offer. While you should make sure you have strict privacy settings in place on your personal social media accounts, you should set your LinkedIn privacy settings to make as much content as you are comfortable with public. That way employers can instantly view your skills, work history, and interests. LinkedIn has many features that allow employers to search for job seekers, including being able to tell who is most active on LinkedIn which basically means if you are commenting on others' posts and posting things yourself. They can also tell who has engaged with the company's LinkedIn page and who has connections with current employees. Many employers also use LinkedIn to check the background of a potential employee, or even to post job openings that you can apply for directly through LinkedIn. LinkedIn has several types of connections, first degree, second degree, and third degree. First degree connections are those who you sent a direct request to connect with. Second degree connections are the first degree connections of your first degree connections. Have I lost you yet? Using Facebook's terminology, second degree connections are the friends of your friend. You are able to directly message your second degree connections to get to know them better. However, they will not be able to see your updates or new posts unless you invite them to be a first degree connection. First degree connections will see all of your updates and you can message them directly. Third degree connections are people you do not have any direct contact to, so you cannot message them and they cannot see your updates. Okay, I know that was a lot. So here's a slide that sums up what I just talked about. Feel free to pause the video if you want to take notes here. So now you might be wondering, how do you get connections? You can get connections by first searching for someone, like a former coworker, using the search bar at the top of the site, or you could sync the site to your email or to your phone's contacts. Once you have one connection, you will start to see a bunch of spaces on the site filled with profile pictures of people you may know, or you can click on the My Network tab, as shown on the screen here. This was just a very brief overview of LinkedIn's capabilities. There is both a free version and a paid subscription version of LinkedIn. Everything I talked about today is available through the free version of LinkedIn. And for most people, the free version is sufficient, though if you're interested in the paid version, LinkedIn does offer a free trial for users to play with. And that brings us to the end of the Strategic Job Search Workshop. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching this virtual workshop. If you have any questions about this course's content, please email the WorkSource Spokane workshop team at ESDWS Spokane workshop team at ESD.WA.GOV.